The creator of XState emphasizes that XState is not just a state management tool, but a state management and state orchestration tool. As well as keeping track of state in a more traditional sense, XState also allows more control over how state can change and how multiple actors within a state system should be coordinated. Perhaps a decent analogy is that of an orchestra. It's possible for an orchestra to perform without the conductor, but the conductor helps to make sure all of the actors within this musical system are producing the right notes at the right time in coordination with everyone else in the system. So when considering whether X state is too complex, much like with RxJS, we need to understand the value this tool provides over more simple solutions. Sometimes the simpler solution just has simpler syntax and concepts, but actually makes the problem being solved much more difficult, resulting in a solution that is more complex. So in the case of XState, it becomes a question of how much value you think state orchestration provides in your particular situation. If you don't think state orchestration provides enough of a benefit to your situation, then you can probably find a simpler state management solution than XState. We've talked about RxJS signals and XState before in this video, where I experimented with using it to handle a typical data fetching flow in Angular with pending and error states. This is a situation where I think state orchestration doesn't really provide enough of a benefit for me over what I could do with RxJS and signals. That's not to say that it never would in a similar front end situation. But what I want to show you now is a situation where XState is providing enormous value for me. This is a bit of a context switch because this is clearly a game dev project, but it is actually built with TypeScript, RxJS and XState. I'm coding my game like a front end dev who likes RxJS maybe a little too much. So the concerns here aren't actually all that different to a typical front end app. Just instead of managing the state of authentication flows, cookies expiring, refresh tokens, and so on, we are managing the state of how things catch on fire and how that fire then spreads to nearby objects, which I guess is also kind of like front-end development. Everything happening on screen right now is quite complex. Each object tracks its own combustion state, including what state of combustion it is in, how much fuel it has left to burn, and how hot it is. On top of that, an object that is combusting will also find its neighbors and transfer heat to them over time, causing them to eventually combust and also spread to others. But with RxJS and XState, the resulting code for this is relatively easy to understand, manage, and compose with other functionality. Let's start from the outside in because the beauty of this is that the API surface for using these fuel objects in the game is reasonably simple whilst most of the complexity is hidden away in the state machine. Rather than using typical inheritance, I'm creating TypeScript mix-ins, which allow me to compose functionality. For example, it is easy for me to make this fuel class both combustible and movable by just using both of these mix-ins. To set up the behavior of the combustible mix-in, I call this init combustible method, which the mix-in adds to the base class. I pass it the inputs it needs and it returns its outputs, some of which I expose on the fuel class. I also make use of the outputs here by subscribing to the snapshot from the state machine to get the current context and also to run some side effects as the state of the machine changes. For example, when the state changes to flame, I need to add the flame effects. When it changes to the coal state, I need to change the texture to the coal image and so on. Then in terms of interacting with the state machine itself, when heat needs to be applied, I can send an event via a message to the combustible state machine as I am doing here. So that's basically the API I have to deal with when using these combustible objects in the game. And considering the complexity involved here, it is quite nice to work with and there isn't a whole lot of room for bugs to creep in. But now let's take a look at the combustible mix-in itself to see how we are creating and using the state machine. First of all, yes, I know the types here are a bit much, but this is more to do with me wanting to create a type safe mix-in. This doesn't really have anything to do with X state and state machines. What is important here is that we are importing and using this combustion machine as part of the mix-in. And now we get into the state machine itself. One of the really nice side benefits of using X state is that we can use this visualizer tool to play with the machine and see how the state can change. As for the code itself, it's easier to understand at a glance if I fold most of the implementation details away. We can see the context we are tracking here, what we would more typically call state, 
is the heat and amount of fuel remaining. And this machine can switch between six different states and we have three different types of events that can be triggered on this machine. If we inspect the initial state, we can see that it responds to the tick event. This tick event is something I invoke once a second to update the machine. When this event occurs, if the is poor combustion guard is true, then the state of the machine will switch to smolder. And if the is good combustion guard is true, then the state of the machine will switch to flame. These guards are defined here and are a great way to reuse logic throughout the machine. We also have some actions defined. As you can see here, when the apply heat event is triggered, we call this action, which will apply my highly realistic implementation of heat transfer and update the heat value in the machine's context appropriately. There is more going on here, of course, and maybe I could do a deeper dive into the specifics in another video if that is of interest to anyone. But the key value X state is providing for me here is this orchestration of how the state of the machine should change based on the changing context of the machine. Not only does this make it rather easy to see how the states can change, it also provides a level of safety that you might not get with another solution. Take this hot coal state for example. Once it is in this state, it can go to the coal state or the complete state, but it's impossible for it to go back to the flame state. And as you can see here, I intend to extend this even further to take into account the wetness state of the fuel, which should be reasonably straightforward to integrate into this state machine. With other approaches, this level of complexity would be hard to manage. If you found this video useful, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. Uh, drop a comment if you're interested in seeing more on X state, and I hope to see you back here again for the next video.